Salam and welcome back to SomaliDispatch.com's YouTube channel. My name is Abdul Ghadir Guled. Najma Ahmed Hashi, better known as Nisjum Arts, is a professional artist and an instructor who focuses and looks to life for inspiration uh, for her art. She joined us from her Hargeisa studio to talk to us about her journey and gave us some tips on how to get started in, in painting. Um, if you can uh, please start us off by telling us how you uh, initially got introduced into the art of painting would be uh, great. Um, actually, I introduced by my father when I was very little. I was around seven years. The first time I tried to do some uh, painting or art or drawing uh, back from school or madrasa, I used to draw on the sand and on the ground. And then sometimes when I get back home, I had uh, an empty wall on top of my, be my bed. And then I used to draw something every little, something little every day, so that I add something to, it was like a community kind of drawing on the wall, where I put all my thoughts in. Every time I get back from, from school or from madrasa, I used to uh, drop something new, like, um, like there's a mosque, there's children going to the mosque, there's a mother feeding her child, there's a a guy with um, um, doing so, fetching water to his family and stuff. I, I didn't know much drawing, but I used to do drawing of stick men, you know, like those sticky legs, uh, yes. those kind of people I used to draw. And that was my figures. That used to be my figures. So that's how I started. And I used to see my older sisters drawing on the sand with uh, neighborhood children. And I used to like it, like, wow, what are they doing? I still remember the first image in my mind that my sisters were drawing, uh, girls playing in the house, girls cooking, a sitting room on the sand. So they, it's like a story. They, they just, uh, I mean, they clean and they start again, a new story, and I used to watch it. So that's how I started. And from there, from that age, until now, I remember I, I keep drawing, I keep painting anytime I got a chance, even at the school and at work, everywhere I go. I, it's something that makes me feel good when I do it. Right. Um, it's very inspiring and, and, and to hear that, you know, we all start drawing the stick men first, right? But uh, some of us actually pursued it like, like you did. Have you had any training, formal training in, in painting or are you all self-taught? Um, no, it's a self-taught process. I never gone to school or I didn't get a chance to go even to school. There were no classes. Even from the beginning, we had no classes in Somalia. There's no classes for art. You just go and study language, how to write, how to read, mathematics and other things. We never had a typical art class. So I just taught myself mm -hmm. uh, in the process. Mm. Uh, that's how I started no that's great um when you're when you're painting or drawing um what inspires you where do you get your inspirations from for your great pictures and paintings um normally I there's sometimes I, I get my inspiration from different ways sometimes I get my inspiration from just walking to the market I see something that creates a story uh, then I note it in my mind. I keep that image in my mind. And then I go home and then start sketching and then drawing. That's how I start. Sometimes I go to internet. But the beginning of the idea is I just got it from somewhere or from a friend of mine telling me a story or walking on the street or, in, or being at the school or following the news. Because sometimes I see a bad news or a good news that I want to share my own idea through drawing with the with the people through social media right so that's how i get my ideas right um i, I know you've did a lot of work uh, given the pandemic uh with with you know coronavirus inf infection uh, awareness campaigns um can you tell us a little bit about that and other stuff that you're currently working on um during 2020 uh, that was when the corona started. 
and I was in Mogadishu, then left to Nairobi for a few days. Then when I get back to Mogadishu, I also got coronavirus, affected by the, by the virus. So I was staying home, quarantined, away from my family. So I started keep drawing and painting so that I even help myself uh, being refreshed. And uh, it's, it was kind of meditation. I also started teaching art classes on Instagram uh-huh. live. I used to do live Instagram classes. So I people were coming those, in, yes. I was showing them. So I was just showing them some tips and then they, I was just enjoying with them. They yeah. were sending me the, the pictures they drawn online so wow. that I check with them. Oh, you have to fix it like this. And then I created some kind of community there. And then uh, after doing that a while, I got a little bit more sick, so I couldn't continue. So they, they used to check on me. Teacher, what happened to you? You stopped the classes, you know? And then, and then I don't know, I just then got busy and didn't continue, but I'm thinking to start that classes again. And I did some images about Corona while I was fighting the Corona. There's a, a picture I drawn about boxing the Corona, like I, yeah. I'm fighting, I'm killing it. You know, that kind of image <laughs> yes, to show positivity, you know? Right. And then that was the image I created. So now I'm currently working on, on doing some, uh, I did exhibition in Mogadishu mm-hmm. a few months ago. And uh, I, I did a lot of artworks for my own so that I create a collection where I can uh, showcase in any next uh, exhibition or anything. Then when I get back to Hageza, I was doing more commission works and I was working with uh, these NGOs about creating digital images for people to understand about the message they want sent to the community uh, through image. So I was working on with uh, WFP and other uh, uh, small NGOs. So yeah. Right, no, that's that was, great. That's what I'm working on. One of the one of the most in this, like there's plenty, but one of the most recent inspiring uh, picture of you uh, was at the Mogadishu uh, book fair recently with the kids. Yes, and uh, that yes. that just warmed my heart. Like I, I like it, that's oh. just what it's about, right? Like to see these young boys and yes. girls on their knees and hands and drawing, and you standing on top of them and just instructing that was just heartwarming and and you know with the classes that you spoke of I I think there is a need for that given the pandemic these days with all the kids being cooped up in the house uh, at least in 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 the west out here we we will definitely yeah. uh, as, a, as a parent I would definitely value that and see my kids um, especially my two daughters getting into that so um definitely. The, yeah um so um do you have um so social media let, let, let's let's talk about that a bit um when i was grown up um that wasn't available to artists how did that propel yes. you and encourage you and and possibly get you exposed even more can you tell us a bit about how that helps artists yes yes um that uh, uh social media especially facebook was really the thing that brought me up. I remember my parents, uh, my father died 10 years ago. He was also an artist, he was a painter. He used to encourage me to do more paintings. He used to show me some tips, but my mom was against me doing the art because she believed it's not uh, something good for, or it's something haram, you shouldn't be doing art, drawing human figures and stuff. So she was always against me. So there was a time gap, like it was um, around four years, five years that I haven't done any artwork. And I thought maybe that's right, I shouldn't be doing. And then social media, some of my friends, when I started using Facebook, they add me into a group of artists. There's a guy who add me, who created a group, then he called Somali Ben, Somali uh-huh. Pen, something, yes. Somali Pencil. Yeah. Then he add me into that group. And then it was full of artists. They used to post some artworks they've done. And then I started doing it. And everybody was surprised. Like, wow, you're an artist. We didn't know that. And then I felt like people are liking. Then I continued doing it every day, a new artwork, a new artwork. Then it created a community of artists for me. 
and uh, people liked and people kept following me. I thought it was 2005 when I started coming back to art. And then everybody was so happy to see what I'm doing. I remember I drew Garia's uh, face, you know, Garia, the poet. Yes, yes. Garia His Dama. portrait. Yes. yes. Yes, and everybody shared around and they were like, oh, this girl drew this. And I felt like maybe this is something good. Then how, that's how I started doing. And the Somali pen, I remember we did a one year anniversary. We came together, we had a cake, written Somali pen, and that gave me encouragement, meeting with these young local artists, talking to them. I got very inspired. So that's how I started. And social media really is the thing that put me back to art. Right. Social media is like where everything started back, giving me hope. Right. Um, you know, I wouldn't be much of a, a, much of a Somali or a journalist if I didn't know who Gary was. Um, but, yes. um, you know, you, you touched on some of the challenges, you know, as, as a female, as a Somali, as a Muslim who lives in the Horn of Africa. I yes. think your base is now in Hargeisa. Um, yes. The, what hindrance and challenges do you come across and how did you uh, made, made it work for you? Actually, there's a lot of challenges we're facing. Um, like we have a lot of uh, challenges. For example, people see it something uh, haram, something not part of the religion of drawing something with life, like a human being face, animals and stuff. They tell you like, oh, this is not good for you. This cannot be future for you. You need a better job. This is not a regular job. And uh, they tell you like, or sometimes they like your work. They say, oh, you created a beautiful work. Can you draw me? Like they think it's just something for fun. <laughs> they won't buy your work. They say it's beautiful, but they don't buy your work. And you're a surviving artist. You want to get income from it. Also, people appreciate what you're doing and buy your work. Uh, um, so that, that that's another challenge. And also as a female, when they see you doing all this stuff, they think that you're wasting your time on something useless, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And there's something uh, happened. I used, uh, I started nursing at the university. So I, I started working as a nurse. I felt like this is not my thing. And uh, I have to start my own business. So I thought like, what is, what am I good at? And then I said, oh, I know art. Maybe I create some designs. Maybe I create some beautiful image so people can buy. So that's how I started creating my own business through art, mm -hmm. and uh, and then leave nursing. And my mom is like, "Are you crazy? How can you leave what you have learned for this?" Right. And then when she saw me doing a great business, bringing money in, she was like, "Okay, now you're maybe in the right direction." Yeah, we all have as so, yeah. parents. Yeah, we all have as parents the, 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 you know, the image of a starving artist and, you know, you yeah. know and, and on top of that, as Africans, we value our lawyers and doctors and <laughs> nurses and what have you. So yeah, exactly. And when it comes to art and, and Somalis, it's, it, if it's not writing or um, singing, right, or playing instruments, that's the only art like we knew. Yes. So it's refreshing to see uh, you come up. Um, obviously there are, I mean, arts and all of these other people that preceded you that did a little bit of art. Um, you know, the challenges uh, I was alluding to uh, on top of the ones that you mentioned was uh, finding materials uh, for painting. Yes. And is, that a, is that a challenge for yeah. you? Or? It's a big challenge for us. You know, every little thing I have here is not, in, is not bought from inside the Somali or in the country. Even the little brushes are not available in the in the country, even from Gadishu or from Hargeza. Uh, so we always have a challenge of bringing materials uh, because people are not get used to doing art. So the businesses, they don't bring something that people don't use mostly. Right. So you have to bring your own materials. You have to call some friends outside. Can you please bring me this? Can you please bring me this? Or all my materials that I have here now, I bought it when I went to Nairobi for training. Mm -hmm. I bought every little thing that I wanted because I was they, I was given by a grant. So in the grant money, I bought all the materials I needed. 
I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. So it's not available. We have a big issue with 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 mm -hmm. any material that we want. Even these kind of papers are not available in the country. Wow. So yeah, we have a big challenge with 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 materials. Right. Um, you know, I'm also it came it just came to me that you don't normally do um political cartoons or pictures you, you, you mainly focus on life and what it what it presents um as a somali was that a conscious decision um because your predecessor i mean Ahmed is known for his political satire yes. cartoons right um yeah you, yeah is that something you, you I yeah in that field i felt like you know, uh, in politics, basically, I hate polit politics because it's kind of something that anyway puts you in trouble, you know. Right. So anyway, I can avoid away from that. I do. I always talk about the things that the society is going through apart from uh, uh, politics. I don't like those kind of talking about the government, talking about, right. because, you know, I'm living in Somaliland and uh, my parents is, my mom is from Mogadishu and oh. my dad is from Hargeza from Somaliland. So right. I kind of feel like I'm lost in the middle. <laughs> I also grew up in Mogadishu. Right. Half the best of my of life both, I was both in worlds, Mogadishu. I would say. Yeah, and half of my life I was in Hargeza. So I kind of felt like I, bo I belong to both places. So. If I start talking about some kind of places and forget about the other place, uh, I kind of felt like you leave uh, half of yourself it's not out. Good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so I never uh, talk about politics. I don't do anything about those things. I don't like cartoons, but I like to talk about real life stories. I like right. to draw something real, really happens in my community. And mostly I like doing nature stuff. Right, right. No, it's and it's beautiful, and you you that's you know if something is not in your wheelhouse, it's it's best to 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 ignore that and just mm -hmm. stick with what you like and inspires you the most. Uh, before you show yeah. us some of the basic um, painting skills that I started like me, um, apart from the stick mm -hmm. figures, I still draw uh, <laughs> when I'm mocking my kids and stuff. Uh, what does one yeah. need? Uh, what does that one need to have? Uh, before they they set out in in experimenting, if you will. Okay, um, if you are a beginner of art, a beginner artist, you don't have all these materials that I have here. All you need is just a small white paper yeah. book, whatever size or shape yeah. it is, yeah. and all you need is a pencil and and uh, this. You need a pencil. You need and an a eraser. A razor, and then yeah. you need a white paper, empty yeah. white paper. Yeah. So you just draw basic things like you practice a lot on yeah. pencil. Yeah. And then when you practice a lot on pencil, you can move to color. But mm -hmm. first of all, you have to learn how to do the basic drawing shapes, right. not the sticky figures. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you have to create <laughs> that. You know. Yeah. So that's the basic thing you need. Right. And then when you advance, you can have colors, you can have brushes and all of that. Right. So if you can um, show us some basic shapes and, and stuff and uh, uh, it would Yeah, be I want to show you some basic things here. Right. I have a white paper and I don't want to draw a very complicated thing. No. Yeah, just... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, because you got <laughs> some basic uh, things. Yeah, let's assume First we're all one, starting this now. So yeah, let's say I'm drawing a face. Right. I, I decided to draw a face of a girl, something yeah. like that. Right. And then I have to use a pencil first of all because that's the basic thing. A paper and a pencil is always mm. what you have to have. How uh, I I start. I want to start like drawing a face of a girl. Uh, I know um, I'm not basic, but... <laughs> yeah, no, that's elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're going to enjoy it. So it's just a small face. It's just the shape of a face. Mm -hmm. The joy lines and, and the head shape. This is just giving me... Yeah, yeah. Now you can see. Yeah. Okay.
So here is the face, the shape, the, the uh, I'll give her a scarf. Oh, okay. For a moment there, I thought you were drawing me. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll draw you. No, Let's no. See. Please no. continue. <laughs> I, I, I have to. Let me see. I'll draw you. Okay. I'll okay. draw you. I'll turn, I'll turn the girl. <laughs> uh, very quick way of you. Very quick oh picture God. of you. Not very um, complicated, but very simple. And you know when you want to start drawing a face? Yeah, as a journalist. Just draw always, the shape of the face. It, it's funny because yeah. as a journalist, they tell us not to be the story, but go ahead. <laughs> now you are the story. Uh, yeah. In the uh, headlines. So your face is shaped like this with uh, no hair, that's better. Yeah, the cone head, yeah. <laughs> because the hair is complication. <laughs> so that's you with the ears. I'm just drawing a basic shape of the face. Right. Uh. It's, it's better that you're wearing glasses. It mm. makes it easier. Mm. Wow, it's coming together. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's going to be you. And your eyebrows a little bit up. Mm -hmm. I should draw the eyes, although they're inside the glasses. Now I'm just drawing basic shapes of the face because you have to use pencil for everything when you're on the starter. I have to practice, especially after practice drawing things that you see. It's better. Right. Although I can't see you very well because you're in small um, screen. Yeah. I, I like when I'm drawing someone sitting in front of you me. You know, it's amazing. And, and, and you didn't know me before from this, right? So literally, this is the first time you're meeting me. And, and, and to have that picture yes. up quickly is, yeah. is amazing to me. Oh, thank you. Because it's the first time I see you. Yeah, like, cause I, we used to talk online, but never seen your face. That's right. Or your, the shape that's your right. face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, we, yeah, we, it took us a bit to uh, get to this stage because um, we, we went back yeah. and forth on, on WhatsApp a few times. Um, no, it's, it's, it's really yes. great. And I, and I, and I can't thank you enough. And if you can just turn that mm -hmm. canvas to the camera a little bit, to, just to, <laughs> looks like I'm squinting in there, but <laughs> it's, it's possible. Does it look because... like you a little bit? It's, it's possible because I, I, I'm trying to read the teleprompter. And that's why I look like I'm squinting. But uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. But great. I like it, the shape of you. So it's, it's so simple because no complication of hair, nothing. It's just right. uh, a, a small egg shaped face. Right. That's, that's, it. that's why I don't need a makeup <laughs> artist to do this. It's <laughs> yes, there, yes. You don't there need isn't that. much. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's great. I, I like it. And then I can color it if I want to color. Yeah. I'll give you color and stuff. Yes. Yeah. But first of all, if you are basic, you have to learn how to draw the shape of something. That's right. Yeah. That's and then you decide the color you want to put in and all of that. Yeah. That's amazing. So that's how the basic thing comes up together. Mm-hmm. 
And then I can color it later. We want to do that more. We can color it. I think I just found my, my profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do a better one. This is just an experiment. <laughs> Oh, goodness. This is just an experiment. Right. Yeah. No, that's amazing. That's amazing. And that's, yeah. No, that's really good. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. so that's how the basic things come up together. And then you decide which color you want to put on the skin. Right. And by using watercolor, this is watercolor. Right. Um, it has these small brushes with has water inside. Right. You just squeeze and cover it you know right so, yeah well that's, that's well that's great yeah, that's um, how i color it yeah no well, that's great um it, it really is it, it it shows the talent that it shows that it, how much fun this could be and i will implore you again and again to have that courses back up online mm -hmm. with with social media yeah. and the pandemic now um basically mm -hmm. Um, telling us that we can do things from our home, right? So I think there is a value yes. in that, and I think you should give a serious consideration. Um, and, yes. and, and we would we would definitely do everything that we can to promote that for you as well. And I oh, uh, thank you so much. I'm really really wants to do that, especially now when the kids are at home. I can give them some tips so that they can also enjoy with the family. They can grow together. Right some right. classes online so that they just enjoy basic things right and i know art is fun art is really something opens your mind up and makes right. you feel like you can do something new right you know right and, and it could be skill when you grow better that's right no it's it's definitely a, a valued uh, skill and um, it's not mm -hmm. just for recreational if you if one wants to pursue it as a profession it's 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 one mm -hmm. of those awesome things that one can do for society I can't thank you enough for joining mm -hmm. us today and explaining your path and, mm -hmm. and your journey in life and, and how we can all get involved in art and appreciate it more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. I'm glad that and I enjoyed it. Yeah.